All right, welcome back to another episode of Conversations with Jay. I got another special guest in the building. I'm going to allow him to introduce himself. Hey, yo, what it do, man? It's your boy, Jovi the God. The Rebirth album is streaming on all platforms right now. Yo, Jay, what's good, my boy? Man, I cannot complain, bro. How you feeling? Man, I'm feeling good, man. Life is good. Man, what's changed since the last time we linked? That was like a year ago, right? Yeah, yeah, no doubt, man. So um, since then, bro, man, I got the movie out on BET. Um, it's called My Perfect Wedding. Uh, starting Chicago's own Erica, Erica Hubbard, you know what I'm saying? Omar Gooden from Baby Boy, you know what I'm saying? So I'm doing really big, man, doing good things, man. Also got a new album coming out this summer, uh, you know, The Inception. That's the name of that album. It should be dropping this summer. And don't forget to vote for your boy, 312 Music Awards, you know what I'm saying? Nominated for a couple big awards over there, too. You know, you, you know when I when I sit with people, I want them to grow, you feel me? So yeah. I could look back and be like, bro, I interviewed that person, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now you in a BET movie, <laughs> I interviewed somebody in a BET movie, you, you feel, feel me? me? Yeah. I, I, I'm checking them off the list, man. I <laughs> have platinum producers, platinum artists, man, uh -huh. BET stars, you know what <laughs> I'm saying? You feel me? Yes, sir. Let's talk about the movie, man. Hey, what was it like, first off, mm -hmm. just working with those levels of, you know, black celebrity, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, like, you'll think they'd be um, larger than life, but they really down to earth, regular people, you know? Like, me and Erica Hubbard, we was just sitting the first day, and um, we was just talking, and I said, they, they were talking about whatever dance they do in New Orleans, and I was like, yeah, but they ain't got nothing on footwork. Facts. And she was like, footwork? And I was like, yeah, you, you, what you know about footwork? And she's like, I'm from Chicago. I'm like, I'm from Chicago, right? <laughs> and so from there, we just, you know what I'm saying, was just vibing, just cooling. You know what I'm saying? Even Omar Gooden, you know, he was cracking jokes and, you know what I'm saying? So they really down to earth people. But to see them in they, in they element to do what they, you know, been trained to do is something beautiful, man, because they really are professional when it comes to that, you know? How did the movie come about? So um, I had did a previous movie, Ops. You know, and it was supposed to be like a gangster flick, you know, but some things went sour with, you know, the people that's involved, you know, when dealing with street cats and stuff don't go out that way. They, you know, so the movie got scratched. But the director called me to come out to do this movie because he had a good little part for me, a part where, you know, we do a little speed dating. You know, I ain't going to get y'all too much. But, yeah, he gave me a good little part. I went out there and I killed it. It was love. All right, bro. You say you was you was a gangster in one movie. <laughs> And in the second one, you speed dating, bro. Do, all right, before we get into that, did you have any background acting at all? Never before. Um, you know, I've always been a character. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, I've always seen myself, like, do larger than life shit. I'm a movie buff, so I know all the lines from the movies. You know what I'm saying? And so when it came to for me to, you know, change and be whatever they wanted me to be, you know, that came natural. You know what I'm saying? So, cause I, like Jovi the God is a moniker of myself. You know, it's a character that I created. It's a, it's a persona of Jovan. You know what I'm saying? So definitely, definitely something that I developed. Hey, my brother named Jovan, man. I got a twin <laughs> brother, man. His name Jovan. Wow. Would yeah. you look at that? Hey, yo, it's so many big reveals today. <laughs> 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 the vibrations is crazy right now. All right, now you, you make it onto the big screen, bro. Right. Is this something that you, you want to pursue long term or it was just something that just randomly just occurred? So it randomly occurred, but now it's something that seems viable. Like I'm going to be doing this long term. You know, like the director keep hitting me back. You know, um, the responses that I got from the first movie that actually made it to the big screen was enormous. All of the actors that was in the movie, they liking, they posting, they sharing on, you know, like whatever I post on Instagram, they like, they post, they share. You know, and they all verified. So for them to be still in tune with me two years after the movie fell off, you know what I'm saying, or whatever, is really big. So it sees it as it's some type of lane for me in this acting. So 
I'm definitely gonna keep it going, bro. Now you was telling me they they were looking for act. I mean rappers. Yep. Now you being a rapper, bro, do you do you come on set and try to push the music too, or do you just be like, nah, I'm here for something else? Yeah, that's what I did. I was just there for something else. You know, I took that opportunity to learn. You know what I'm saying? I already knew what I was gonna do. Rapping come natural. You know what I'm saying? But I, I wanted to use that opportunity to learn their craft. You know, watch them in their element, see how they study, how they prepare, how they execute. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's some scenes, I ain't going to tell you, it's some scenes that, you know, it's some vulnerable scenes for Erica Hubbard in there. And, and she she got to pull emotions out of somewhere. You know what I'm saying? And to see them, you know, just be laughing and joking and chilling with you and in action and they conjure these emotions. And it's like, oh, wow, like, to see them do that. You know, I wanted to learn. That's why I went there. So. You know, I'm, I'm not I'm not pushing the music. The music gonna speak for itself. You know, Jovi the guy gonna speak for himself. It's like once you see my talent, then you'll research me on the back end and say, oh, okay, he really talented on both both sides. You know? All right, what was what was one main thing that you took from just that whole moment in life? You know what I'm saying? Seize the moment. You know, uh, when it was my turn to do what I had to do, it was 60 people in there, for real, and everybody had three minutes. It was one dude who went up there. He was a light-skinned dude. He had two chicks. Yeah, I got baby one and baby two. You know, his part, he killed it. I'm like, oh, I know they picking him. You know, and, and so I had to seize that moment. I had to, you know, be locked in. You know what I'm saying? Not be distracted and, and take it for everything that it was worth. You know, and at the same time, be myself and create relationships. You know, so that was the biggest thing from that, man. Seize the moment. Like, don't let the moment be bigger than you. You, you, you are the moment. This is your time to shine, and you a star. You know, you got to believe in yourself, and that's what I did. I believed in myself, and I made it. I made it, you know? That's crazy. It's crazy, bro. You ended up in a BET movie, <laughs> oh, BET, bro. bro. From a hood movie to a BET movie. With Silk the Shocker, bro. That's crazy. Erica Hubbard. Oh, my goodness. I love Silk the Shocker. Me, too. He was one of my favorite on No Limit. They were but, sleeping on him. Hey, but... Going back in time, bro, Silk was kind of weak. You know what I'm See, saying? The, here mu we go. the music didn't evolve well. I'll yeah, say that, so his know? rap his rap style was a little bit different. But um, if you listen to a lot of rappers now, they kind of rap like Silk. Man, that's why. Fumble the fumble the fumble. That's why this shit's so trash. <laughs> 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 All right, now, now no you, you nominated. You know, for the three one two music awards. No doubt. How where how did you find out that you were nominated? So um they hit me in the they hit me in the inbox on, on Instagram and it was like uh they sent me like some congratulations thing. You know, when you opened it up it was balloons, all type of shit. You know, and they sent it to me, you know, I was honored. It's like, wow, you know, I didn't think I would have made it on the list of the, the people that's on that list, you know. I didn't think I would have made it up there with that being my debut album. Nobody ever really knowing about me as a lyricist, you know, big. Now let's let's take it back to the first interview because you've been rapping for a minute, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But this is your debut album. So yeah. for the people that didn't watch the first interview, like what was what took so long, you know what I'm saying, for as far debut. as the process. Yeah, and so, you know, when you're doing music, you also live in life. You know what I'm saying? And so when life settled in you know, I started focusing on work, kids, you know, living, trying to develop myself, you know, and I put, you know, my passion to the side. You know, I put what I love to the side. And um, after a while, I started going through, you know, like some traumatic stuff. You know, shit was just happening in my life. And that's what made me pick the pen back up because I needed an outlet. And so once I started picking the pen up, I crafted this album. And it, it didn't start to be, oh, I'm going to make an album. I'm going to put out an album. I want people... It just started to be like, oh, I made that song and it made me feel better. You know what I'm saying? Oh, now this making me feel good too. And it just kept kept going and came out to be the rebirth. Do you ever find yourself like talking about the rebirth and, and telling people like, bro, this reminds me of this classic album or it reminds me of this classic All album? All the time, man. So they, they hear the rebirth album and um, once they hear the rebirth, they like, Yo, this is like Illmatic, or this is like Reasonable Doubt. You know, this is this one of them albums that they gonna go back and research and do history on uh, five, ten years later. You know, after you pop. You know, so you know, yeah, they definitely compare it to a lot of classic albums from New York for sure. What was your some of your personal favorite joints off the Rebirth? 
Uh, of course, Bonnie and Clyde is one of my favorites. Nah, nah. Let me ask you this. Let me okay, ask you okay, this. Okay. What songs do you think mm-hmm. provoked the three one two awards to say, "Hey, this is one of the best albums of the year"? So, off top, you know, for for the nomination of best album of the year, uh, the Can't Nobody record with Peter Jericho was tearing up the radio, tearing up all the shows. You know, that's that the video shot by Will Gates. He's also nominated for videographer of the year. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that was my first video. You know, I had the I had the Bruce Wayne Batman thing going on, and uh, it was a melodic sound, and they hadn't heard that in rap from Chicago in a long time. You know what I'm saying? And so I know that that caught their attention. And then you know, like the songs like Bonnie and Clyde, and then uh, Can't Nobody Part Two featuring Slick J Adams, who was also a Chicago legend, uh, Chicago stepping legend. And um, you know, they was hearing those records. And they, they was like, okay, this this is an album. And then you got, I got the records like the title track, The Rebirth, and Sky's the Limit. And so they heard those records and like, oh, this dude's a lyricist. You know what I'm saying? So like, not only is this a, does he make a complete album, you know, because the last song on my album uh, is called Glory. You know, and that's a gospel song. You know, that's a 100% gospel song. And so not only did I make a complete album, but I got bars. So they like, album of the year, lyricist of the year, it just fit, you know. All right, now, it took you a nice little while to actually release your debut. But now you say you are already working on the next project. Yeah. Is is something flowing in your life that's just allowing you to make music? I would say, I don't, don't want to say more quality music, you know what I'm saying? But at a at a, a clip where you comfortable releasing it to the public. Yeah, so um, I just feel like, my, you know, I'm I'm a water sign, so everything has to flow for me. Um, I, I'm big on emotions, and so it's a lot of emotions in my record. And so I channel my emotions, and the way that I get it out is through my music. And so once I start to build up and build up, and these ideas come to fruition, you know, I just put all of my heart, my soul, and just pour myself out into the music, and it just comes out organically. Is it ever difficult to, you know, put your real life into music where other people are gonna consume it? break it down, have something to say about it? Um, The judgmental part, I'm always conscious of that because I always feel like, you know, they're going to critique you regardless because you're a rapper. You know what I'm saying? So when they critique and they be like, oh, is these stories real? Like, can't nobody, you know, oh, is that real? You know, did he have a, you know? So I'm always conscious of that, but I'm also aware of the shock value. So when they be like, oh, shit, that is real. You know, that did happen to you. You know, they hear glory and they be like, the fractious maxillary in my face was crushed. The surgery was 50 thou. I ain't making enough. You know, was that real? Yeah, that was real. You know what I'm saying? I had a crushed face. I ain't have no insurance. You know what I'm saying? I had to figure out how I was going to get my face fixed. You feel what I'm saying? And so, you know, I'm always conscious of it. But, you know, as, as an artist, you got to realize that, you know, you're a public figure. You know, and the best way that people are going to relate to you is if they can feel you. You know, as if they can see the realism in you. Is and that's if you want to be that style of an artist, the real artist, not the ones who are about the glitter, the gold, the glitz and the glamour, but the ones who want to give you a taste of reality. And that's what I am. I want to give you reality rap. You know what I'm saying? Do you ever listen to your own music and be like, damn, I made that. I'm cold as hell. All the time. All the time. So I, I'll do a record and, you know, the singers will be on the record singing what I wrote. And I'll be like, damn, I wrote that in the bathroom. You know what I'm saying? I write, I have some bars and I say some crazy bars and I'll be like, what made me think of that? You know what I'm saying? Like, why would you say that? You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, I always have those awe moments with me because this is something that I love to do and to see it just work its way out. It's everything is like, oh, oh, it's like the first time you had your baby and you see your baby for the first time. It's like that every time. <laughs> what would you say was some of the goals that you set last year that you actually accomplished? Um, having a movie out, um, having a highly respected album, you know what I'm saying? Um, having the Chicago music scene recognize me as an artist, um, you know, touching every podcast and every radio station in Chicago, you know, um, I, I pretty much accomplished that. Having a video by Will Gates, you know what I'm saying? Being on Illinois radio, you know what I'm saying? All of these things that I set myself up to do. Like, I planned those things way before I dropped my album. These were things that were already on the checklist, as you know. And so to see those things come to fruition, man, I, I'm really proud of the work that I'm putting in. But 
it ain't enough. You know, still got more work to do. Let me ask you this: Why why was it so important for you to touch the podcast and touch the the radio stations? Because a lot of times, like an artist can't oversaturate themselves through mm-hmm. you know just being out there and seen. Mm-hmm. So what what motivated you to be like, nah, bro? People got to see me. People got to hear this. Cause don't nobody know me. You know, it's artists that's been on this circuit for five, ten years. You know what I'm saying? Here I come, uh, 30, 38, 37, 38-year-old 38 out of nowhere, who is Jovi the God? You know? And so the only way people would see me is if I was out there. And I don't need to be out there sometimes. I got to be out there all the time. Not to mention, I don't live in Chicago. You know? If, first, you got to establish your home first before you establish anywhere else. You know? And so I don't live here, so I had to apply extra pressure in Chicago because I'm not here every day. I can't just pull up to the events how everybody else can. You know, it got to be planned, plot, and strategized for me. So I had to really make myself visible so I can have a presence here at home first before I ventured out. You know what I'm saying? It was important to me. What level of growth would you say you would attribute to, you know, doing interviews and just talking to people? Humongous, bro. So... It makes me, I'm, I'm at a level now where I'm just comfortable as soon as the lights come on. You know, any question that they're going to ask me, I'm pretty much ready for it. You know, uh, at first it was a little stumble, a little fumble, a little, you know, a little trepidation, which is normal for up-and-coming artists who are growing in, in this business. You know, but the more and more I did it, the more and more I stuck with it, you know, this is like second nature now, you know. And it also, this helps me on the movie sets, you know what I'm saying? So, because when the lights come on, you got three minutes to do what you got to do. You might sit around for five hours, but you got to do three minutes worth of shooting. But you got to be prepared as soon as the lights come on. So all of that, all of that comes into play. I don't think artists understand <clears throat> how important an interview is. Yeah. You know, especially to up and coming artists. You know, even well established artists too. Because mm-hmm. there's some well established artists that I've never listened to their music, but I seen them on a Breakfast Club or I seen them yes. on on any podcast, and I just listened to them talking. Yep. I, I connected to them as a person. You know, yep. so I don't think people understand how far a solid good interview can take you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Very important. Nah. Very important. What um we spoke on the goals that you had and you crushed for last year. Like, what are some goals that you have for this year? Hey, yo, so this year, I want to take it to a whole nother level. You know, um, I'm a firm believer that you can make it independent. And so I want to jump off my own independent tour, you know, where I got a group of artists and we just travel this country and we build our fan base, core fan base. I want to take it back to where, you know, everybody's so infatuated with the streaming numbers. I want to get it on all platforms and be streaming. You know, that those numbers to me, you know, that, those are just like fluff. You know, it's just fluff. It's not hardcore. You know, I, you could have an album, the rebirth is streamed 500,000 times. Can I pull up in the city and have 10,000 people come and see me and, and spend $20 to see me? You know, that's because streaming numbers don't touch the people. You know, that's just somebody who clicking the button real quick on the phone. But you, I want to take it back to where the people know me and I can touch the people. And I can throw my own event and I can have 500 to 1,000 people there to support me. You know what I'm saying? And know my album word for word and rock out with me. Not only rock out with me, but rock out with artists that I surround myself with. You know what I'm saying? And so that's one of the major goals of this year. And then, of course, you know, the Inception album is coming. And so if my last album was voted album of the year, you know what I'm saying? This one will be the album of the year. You know, it won't be voted the album of the year. It will be the album of the year. You know what I'm saying? And so... That's the bar that I'm setting myself with, you know what I'm saying, and I ain't coming down. Does that come with any level of pressure, bro, oh, to yeah. have an album critically acclaimed, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Technically, you got to call it a classic. You was calling it a classic before Back anybody then? else called it a classic. <laughs> I was telling them. Now, what level of pressure are you putting on yourself? Because you say if this one nominated, that one going to be it. Yeah, so I'm putting all the pressure on myself. You know what I'm saying? I live by the Mamba mentality. You know what I'm saying? So, like, they, you know, everybody know the Kobe story. You know, everybody know Kobe was up at 4 o'clock in the morning shooting extra shots. You know what I'm saying? And so that's the pressure I'm putting on myself. I'm putting that Tom Brady, Tom Terrific pressure. I want to be the next level. You know, everything I do got to be the next level to the next step. So all the pressure in the world, bro. All up. Man, 
All right, bro. You say <laughs> you say you want to put on a tour, travel all around this motherfucker. Sound like you got unlimited PTO. Bro. <laughs> like, like what? Like, like how are you able to move around like you are with a job? Yo, so first off, I want to say I'm very blessed to have a very very good position with Nike. You know, and so Nike treat their people well. You know, Nike really wants you to chase your dreams. It's, you know, it's not. I don't have a job. You know what I'm saying? I, I work for a company that values their employees. You know, I'm not a I'm not an employee. I'm an athlete. That's what they label us. You know, it's just like the team. The team love their athletes. So I work for a really good company, bro, that allows me to do what I do. I'm even signed up for the entertainment network for Nike. And so when Nike does things like um, when it, when the vice presidents or the presidents come out, you know, I'll be the athlete that is, that's on stage that gets to curate them, ask them funny questions talk to my peers and, and you know at the at these different warehouses. So like they've allowed Nike has allowed me to, you know, do my entertainment thing as well as incorporate my entertainment thing, you know, with them as well. So you damn near sold me on working for Nike, <laughs> bro. I guess they hiring. I want to be an athlete. <laughs> for real. I never cause you know you hear a lot of a lot of things about Nike, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it I never hear it from like a, a I would say a regular person, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like Drake got the key to the he just go in there and do whatever he want. But we to hear do. that right, to hear that they treat every employee like that. I mm -hmm. just gained a, a higher respect for Nike, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, man. We all got the key to the city, man. Like I go to Beaverton, I get the same love Drake get when he go to Beaverton. I mean he Drake, of course he gonna get Drake love, but they gonna treat me the same way. If I walk into any Nike store in Chicago, and I show them my badge, my badge black. They're going to be like, oh, my God, where are you from? They're going to treat me like royalty. The manager going to come out. Whatever shoe I want, if they got it, they're going to make sure I get it. I don't care if it's on the mannequin. You go in there, it's on the mannequin. They're going to say, no, we can't sell you that shoe. I'm and showing it, my black badge. And you walking out with it for free. I'm, I'm going to walk out with it for about 50% off. Okay, that's still decent. <laughs> Super decent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Super decent. So depending on what it is and what store, what store it is. You know? How long you been working for Nike? Um, I've been with them for about two years now, two years. I was with them at first, and then I left because they weren't paying me the bread that I wanted to make. And so I left and went with another company, and then they called me back like, we're going to give you that bread. So I went I went back. I've been with them about two years now. Shout out Nike, man. Salute hey, Nike hey, for real. Hey, whoever you need to pass my name to, bro, just pass it to him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I want to go around everywhere. You know what I'm saying? I want to go to Oregon. You yeah, know? bro. Go to the Portland, campus. You the know? They, they, they just built the Serena Williams building. Facts. That's going crazy. Then you know the New, the New York Nike store, five floors. They make the shoes right there in front of you. Whatever custom shoe you want, they make it in front of you. Whatever custom jersey you want, think which is on. they make it right there in front of you in New York. All right, you, you just brought up Serena Williams. My mother would love vote, both Venus and Serena. Now, I got to ask you this because you brought up. Okay. Who do you think is the greatest athlete of all times? The greatest athlete? Athlete. Michael Jordan. Okay. And this is why. Go ahead. Michael Jordan transcended whatever sport he played in. It, was, it wasn't about Michael Jordan was an idol. He was like, you know, Hercules. Or Zeus from back then. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was bigger and larger than life. He was larger than basketball. He could do whatever he wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? Whatever he stepped in, it was it. You know what I'm saying? And so the greatest athlete of all time, Michael Jordan. Man, I, I'm with you on the mic, you feel me? But I got to say Serena, bro. Why? Tell me why. Just because she dominated One at such a high, high level, level for mm -hmm. so long. You I know can, what I'm saying? I can see that. And sure. I, I really feel like she could have beat men if she played against certain men. Oh, yes, no saying? doubt. But no I'm doubt. with you, Mike the GOAT. Mike going to always be my GOAT. Yep. My man, as soon as LeBron won a little scoring thing, he waited till the morning to text me talking about that Mike shit over right. with. I'm like, come on. Come bro. on, man. We, I watched Mike and I watched LeBron. And <laughs> exactly. Mike did it a whole lot differently. You know Facts. what I'm saying? So I'm with you on that too. You know yeah, what I'm saying? No doubt. No doubt. All right, man. Uh, you working on a new album, man. What else you got planned for the for 2023? So we jumping off tonight. So we doing the Show Love and Unity Showcase. It's powered by Power 92, hosted by Shauna and Sean Dale, the mayor of Chicago Radio. So salute to Shauna, DTP. Salute to Sean Dale. You know, that's tonight, um, 89th, uh, 80, 820 West 89th Street, right off of Halsted. So that's going to be crazy, man. There's going to be a lot of love in the air. And then um, again, March 12th, the 312 Music Awards. So they got a ceremony out here, March 12th. 
I'm going to be in the building. Y'all might catch a performance from me. Y'all might not. But make sure y'all go support them because um, all of the money that they do, it goes to the youth programs for music in Chicago. And so they, they really, really, really touching the youth. It's a, non -prof it's a not for profit. So make sure you support. Buy a ticket. It's $20. $20. You don't even got to go. Just buy the ticket. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Now to help support whatever cause they're trying to do because we need to look out for our youth out here in Chicago for sure. Man, a lot of people are quick to say Chicago don't care about Chicago. You know, Chicago artists can't come together. But it'd be an event like this where they actually mm -hmm. giving back to the youth. And yeah. like you say, bro, you could buy a ticket. You ain't even got to pull come. up. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But your money going to a good place. Exactly. And it'd be killing me when I be in, like, Walgreens or I, I go to do the drive through a Taco Bell. They ask me, do I want to donate some money somewhere? Yeah, a little extra change. Yeah. yeah. And you'd be like, yeah, but yeah. when it's something that can affect the Us. people around you yep. and possibly yo, yo, little cousins, little brothers, or anything, mm -hmm. we quick to turn our ear to that shit. Like, yeah. nah, bro. Yeah, but shut it I down. I don't know where the money going. Like, you don't Throw know where none of it. this money going. You don't know where bro. none of this money going. Facts. Yeah. You just donated the Red Cross. You gave them 75 cents every time you go to Walgreens. Oh, sure. Take the change. But you won't, you know, get them $20. All right, yeah. now. Looking back on, on your start to where you are now, how important has networking played into your growth as an artist? Networking has been everything. So without my, I, I built the network, you know, basically by doing interviews and doing showcases. And from those contacts and those relationships that I built, like it's going to be a layup for this second album. You know, it's going to be a layup to get these BDS spins on all of these different radio stations across the country. It's going to be a layup to, you know, get venues in different states because I got so many different relationships with people. You know, it's, 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 it's already lined up for me because I put in the work and I made the relationships and the contacts. You know, I kept kept in tune with them. I even gave them plays, sent them artists, you know, did things, favors for them. You know what I'm saying? And that's the biggest key is build the relationships because somebody knows somebody that can just give you a layup. You know? Facts. Yeah. Who are some artists that, that you rocking with right now? So, you know, I got Victoria Nicole, one of Memphis' hottest R&B artists. She bring in the 90s back. She came up here with me. I got Cato Stacks. He from Memphis. One of the hottest R&B singers. I brought him up here with me. Of course, you know, I got Big Manny, Cordy Blacker, um, um, Chanel Ellis. Uh, I messed with Chris Cornelius. He hot. Uh, G. Esther Brand. He hot. Street Boy Stretch. C.A. Brown. Man, the list goes on. There's so many. Bees. I rock with him. Sinatra's. Uh, Easy O'Hare. Me and Sinatra's actually got something coming, so be, be, be ready for that. Um, of course, Peter Jericho, Slick J. Adams. Man, the names go on. A Remedy Row. The names go on and on, bro. I got such a network of talent that I keep around me. It just helps me, you know, develop what I'm doing. So definitely. All the names and so many more. If I miss your name, I love you. Trust me. You know I love you when I see you. It's all love. All right. They say steel, sharp, and steel. Yep. You just spoke on keeping talent around you, you know, to push yourself. Yep. Explain that. Like, how, how are you motivated by other dope artists? Yeah, and so I see what they do, and I hear what they come with, you know, and it just inspires me to keep going because I'm like, you know, everybody, we all in the rat race. You know what I'm saying? We all trying to get to one objective, you know, and it's to see people like you'll get down on yourself, but you see this other artist and they keep pushing and they keep making another move. And you're like, okay, I want to make another move too. You know, I ain't going to stop now. They're not stopping. Why should I stop? You know what I'm saying? And so that's, that's one of the biggest motivations. And then I, my ears are sonic. And so I need to hear stuff to get inspiration for music. And so I'll hear somebody say something and it'll give me an inspiration for a whole different, they song might be about whatever, but they might say two words that'll give me an inspiration for a whole new topic, you know? And so my ears are very sonic. Now you spoke on earlier, write R&B, bro. Hmm. How many different genres of music do you feel like you can write? Seven. Yep. And so rap, of course, R&B, um, soul music, country music, Rock and roll, which is on the way. Um, the Jovi the Guy rap, rock album is coming. And um, I feel like I can do opera because I got a I got an opera song on the Inception with an actual opera singer. And she's singing hold opera. Hold on, bro. Hold on, hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold, on hold on, hold on. You have an opera record. Yeah, I got an what, opera record. What inspired you to be like, bro, I want, I want an opera song? And so um, I was watching some movie 
where they where they whack somebody in the opera house. I don't remember what movie it was. Can't okay, sound like some Godfather. Type right. Shit. It was. It was. It was on some mafia type stuff. And uh, when they whacked them, the the opera singer was singing something that just sounded so sad. You know what I'm saying? And um, I had this record where I was battling the emotions of how I felt about my father. You know what I'm saying? And so in that record, I just felt like I needed to have that same feeling. I needed her to, to bring that sadness, you know, that dramatic sadness of what a child goes through not growing up with his father. You know what I'm saying? So definitely wrote the record. She sung it. It's an opera record, bro. It's opera. <laughs> this is crazy, bro. This is crazy. How... how how often are you influenced by watching the movie? Because I got a homie, he actually a producer. And he told me, bro, he would literally put on a, a movie mm -hmm. and mute the movie. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And his his idea and his goal is to make the soundtrack to the movie mm -hmm. that he cannot hear. You right. know what I'm saying? Definitely. So movies definitely inspire um, some of the things that I do. Like some of the stories that I tell. I got a song on this next album called Let Us Live. And um, it's, it's really a... I ain't gonna give you too much, but it's a it's a it's a parlay off of a movie where two friends come up together and then one of the friends kill the other friend, you know. So Damn. yeah, it's it's, it's it, tough. It's tough, you know what I'm saying? And so a lot of the things that I do are based on <laughs> look real life too. Based off movies and based off real life, you know what I'm saying? So it's big, big. It's it's all entertainment, man. And so we as an entertainer, you gotta be a sponge. You gotta find creativity from everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Because there's so much creativity around us. You can't just find it within yourself because sometimes you'll burn, be burnt out. You'll be like, man, I just made two albums. You know, where I'm going to find this from? That's why a lot of entertainers go to be on vacation and be in Fiji and then they come back and they're rapping about how blue the water is because they needed to find that inspiration of man. this water is blue and it's silent. It's whatever. You know what I'm saying? Man, when... when you ready to premiere? I want the opera record, and I want the record where the homie kill a homie. You feel me? Got gotcha. that right in there. Let that work, cause we um we registered with BMI, ASCAP, mm -hmm. all that. So I know. artists get that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Record spent, they get a little change off of that. You no know doubt. what I'm saying? So That's definitely. I would love to add those type of records to our playlist because. Gotcha. I want everybody out here listening to this. Like, if you don't have the Illinois app, download the Illinois Please app. Please download the app. And just randomly, like on a random Wednesday, you feel me, at 11 a.m., you know, yeah. in the morning, just turn on the Illinois app, bro. It's the, the wide range of music that's on there. Like, we was just playing some Luther Vandross, bro. I know. I Shit it. crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, man, I would love to add those levels of music to, you know what I'm saying, the radio, because those aren't the traditional radio records, they you know not. what I'm saying, yeah. that you would hear something about, like, because nowadays everything sound the same. It does. You know, so I would love to get those joints on there, you know no what I'm saying? No doubt. You know, you know all love. You know what's all love. And them definitely, those two are definitely, um, one of them is produced by Two Official. He nominated for a producer of the year. That's that uh, Let Us Live record, so salute to Two Official. But them two, definitely some deep stories. All right, man. For the rest of 2023, man, you already told me your goals and everything. Now, what are what are some things that we could look out for? Because you say you're dropping a project, so when can we look forward to everything that Joby the God got? No doubt. So I'm going to drop this project in July. So probably July 4th, we're going to drop it on Independence Day. That'll give everybody the opportunity to check it out. Um, we about to launch JovyTheGod.com. So that's where you guys will be able to go and actually get the album and purchase it. Um, everything Jovi the God is going to be on JovyTheGod.com. We about to centralize this movement and we about to turn the volume up, uh, really turn the volume up. So um, I'll be on this movie set for a week. So be looking out for BTS for the movie. And then March 12th, man, make sure y'all pull up March 12th. It's going to be a movie out there. It's going to be so many entertainers from Chicago, all of your, all of your favorite independent artists, favorite independent radio stations, independent videographers. These is people who getting it out the mud, man, who doing it on their own. So just come out and support, show love, man. And if you are, if you are an independent artist and you wasn't nominated or, you know, you wasn't selected, you know, I, I would say still come out and, you know, just make you some contacts, network, you know what I'm saying? Because it's going to be a hell of a night that night. So March 12th, make sure y'all tap in for sure. All right. This is my favorite question. I already asked you this today, but I'm going to ask you again. Okay. You feel me? If you can go back and give your younger self any advice, what would it be? My younger self any advice. So... Off top, man, I would say um, pursue my dreams earlier, you know. Um, I let the world take over, and I started to, you know, do things to survive in the world. 
when I should have just pursued my dreams, you know, when I was younger, I'd be further at what I'm doing now. So if you out there and you a shorty and you ain't got no type of ties and, you know, no type of obligations, man, find something that you're passionate in. Find something that you love, that you want to do, and stick with it, man. Put your all into it. Don't let no distractions happen and, you know, something good will come out for you, man, for real. Man, salute to you, bro. Thank you, bro. All your growth that you've had. You know, Thank I feel you, like it's happening a little quick for you. <laughs> it is. It was like I you was know, just here yesterday. Usually it take a little time. Yeah. So I would say what what was one of the main things that you've taken in and learned from your own personal growth? I've uh, learned to give myself grace. You know, um, a lot of times we'll scrutinize ourselves to the point where we'll beat ourselves down. You know, and so I've learned to give myself grace and not rush my own process. You know, what's for me is for me, you know, and it'll happen in my time. And so with giving myself grace, I've learned to be more patient, you know, and, and I've learned to strategize things even better. So if you're out there, man, give yourself a little grace. Don't beat yourself up. Man, once again, bro, salute to you. No doubt, bro. Everything love, you got going on. Yeah. I love to see people grow in some shit that they want to grow in. No you doubt. know what I'm saying? I don't no think doubt. we tell each other that shit enough. You we know don't. what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to say it now. I'm proud of you, bro, and Thank all you. your growth. Because, you, like I say, you sat on this couch, bro, and you said that shit was a classic. I told you. You said it. I, I bought my album a classic. You said that shit. <laughs> you, you, you kept saying that shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And usually... People be capping, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You was no capping your rap. No, you know sir. What I'm saying? So salute to you and everything that you got going on. You, I hope you win that award, yeah, bro. Going I crazy. hope you win that we're award. Crazy. I hope you don't got no speech. I hope you get up there and freestyle, freestyle that freestyle. shit. You yes, feel sir. me? Kanye that shit. You oh, feel hey, me? I already I already put the picture up. I said, this is my first award show. I'm coming like Kanye and Amber oh, Rose with the, with the Henny on the red carpet. With the, with the leather button <laughs> With up. the leather button up. I already <laughs> looked at it. I already ordered it. 312 awards. Get ready. Man, I, I really hope you win that award, bro. No doubt, bro. Both you too, bro. You too, bro. Shout out to Ill Noise, man. Y'all, y'all nominated too, boy. One of the hottest radio stations out here, independent radio stations. So make sure y'all vote for them too, man. I hope y'all win too, bro. Man, to just see it up there, bro, that was just a, a accomplishment enough. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Doubt. Just just to understand where they started from yeah. and understand how that room back there looked now compared to when we first started, you yeah. know. And just the growth of Illinois as a platform and yeah. everything, man, because I live this shit every day, you know what I'm saying? It's beautiful, and shout out to the entire team because no it wouldn't be possible without the team, you know? Salute. And our main goal is just to give back to the culture, you know what I'm saying? Not yeah. only Chicago, but anywhere there's an artist that's on the rise that needs shine, bro, that's what we here for, you okay. know what I'm saying? And, and and I love connecting with artists because I didn't know you from a can of paint, bro. Exactly. You feel me? But here we are. You Look at us. Yeah. And once again, bro, salute to you. You got salute. anything else you want to say before? Nah, we? man. I just want to pre tell you I appreciate you for everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like you said, man, we've been in this journey together. You know, you was one of the first interviews I did. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate you for everything. I appreciate Ill Noise for everything. And, you know, we just going to keep applying pressure. You know, we stronger together than we are apart. Big so facts, man. We'll keep the movement moving. That's love, bro. Love, bro. And till next time, man. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this has been another episode of Conversations with Jay. You already know.